Hello. I'm just going to show a couple neat things in the program Microsoft Research Worldwide Telescope that I thought people would appreciate. Stuff that is pretty commonly known, but it's still really neat to look at. I'm going to start with our solar system. If you download the application, uh, you can repeat exactly what I'm doing for yourself. Uh, down on the bottom left of the screen where it says look at, click on, it'll be down here, click on solar system. It'll bring up our sun, Sol. We can zoom out, look at our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, so on and so forth. We're pretty far out at this point. Behind our solar system you can see the line in the sky. This is the Milky Way galaxy. It's where we it's where we exist. It's hard to really grasp that without a tool like this program. At this point our solar system is totally invisible, but you'll see that the the other stars around us, which may have solar systems around them, if there are things orbiting them, they're all starting to zoom in as well now. All these stars again, they could or could not be solar systems. I think that scientists believe the vast majority of them do have stuff orbiting them, but I, I don't know. Um, and now you'll see that we've actually reached our galaxy. So all of those stars, all of those potential solar systems are just one tiny little pocket in a very vast uh, galaxy here. This is the galactic center over here. So you would think, you know, you'd think that was it. I mean, a lot of people that are uh, are not interested in space or people that have never really looked into it, that's that's about as far as they think is out there. You know, they think this is space. And in reality, see all these little dots back here around me? These are all other galaxies. Every dot you see on the screen at this point, this is all these are all these are all not not just galaxies, but these are all clusters of galaxies. When you see a bright spot like right there or over here, that's not just a galaxy or a galaxy. That's a cluster of galaxies. Each of those galaxies containing I don't know, hundreds of billions of billions. Or or I should say there's there's uh, I got that backwards. There should there could be hundreds of billions of billions of galaxies containing billions and billions of stars. I obviously don't know the exact number. I am an amateur, amateur astronomer, <laughs> which means my funds are limited to looking at space through computer programs and borrowing telescopes off of others because I can't afford to uh, purchase my own telescope. So here we are looking at the known universe. The far edges along the sides here, That is stars 11, between 11 and 12 and a half billion light years away. I think that the furthest discovered uh, galaxy is um, like 13 billion light, light years away or 12.9 or I, I don't know the exact. It's, you know, give or, give or take a couple hundred million years. <laughs> uh the reason that there are these V-shapes is that our galaxy prohibits us from seeing in those directions. doesn't mean that there's not galaxies or stars here. It just means that our, our galaxy is in the way, so we, we can't uh, take those pictures. And until we can fly out to another perspective and take more pictures, it's going to be like that. When will we be able to fly out, say, to here? Oh, I have no idea. I, I, who knows? That so here's our galaxy again, edge on. Again, every single one of these little dots, which would be just like this, only the whole way through here, would be potential solar systems just like ours.
even though there's no there's nothing drawn around them. And here we are, right there. So that covers the first really cool thing about this application. The second really cool thing, let's switch to sky mode. Again, if you get on the bottom left, click on look at and go to sky, it brings up sky mode. This is a perspective as if you're um, on Earth. So now what we want to do is we want to look at, I think it's the moon right there, isn't it? Oh, that's the other, the other cool thing is that the, the entire application runs in real time. So it actually shows you, I'm pretty sure it actually shows the current sunspots on the sun as they are right now. And it also shows things like, this is the correct, this is actually what the moon's doing right now. Um, I was looking at it last night and it was, uh, oh, what do they call that? Um, I believe that is a waning crescent. Right? I think it's a waning crescent. We, I know it's a crescent. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's waning. Because waxing is after the new moon. And we're going to have a new moon here in a couple days. So, um, but, it, but you can go up here to the search and put in something like M31, which is the Andromeda Galaxy. And I'll click on it. And... Okay, it kind of kind of lagged there for a second, I apologize. Um, but what's neat is there's, it gives you different imaging for each galaxy or each thing, so you can actually sit there and switch between them. Which I think is pretty cool. And then just to kind of rub it in Google Google Sky's face a little bit, I'm going to look up Polaris, which is the northern star. And the reason I'm doing that is because on Google Earth, you can't really look at anything on the North and the South Pole. If you do, it's just a jumbled mess of, uh, I don't know, looks like a, like a pixelated nightmare. <laughs> so, again, nothing special about Polaris. Just, uh, just, just wanted to rub it in Google Earth's uh, face <laughs> that we can look at it on Worldwide Telescope. Um, and if I didn't mention it earlier, this video is not endorsed by Microsoft. I have nothing to do with Microsoft. It's not endorsed by Google. I have nothing to do with Google. I'm just an amateur, amateur astronomer. And I find this stuff interesting. And um, I just want to share this for anybody else who also finds it interesting. Thanks for watching.